Hey Virgo, welcome to your reading for the first half of March 2018. Virgo is my rising sign, so I'm very happy and excited to see what this is going to be. Um, but this is for all Virgos, sun, moon, and rising, yeah? So let's get into it. I have pre-shuffled, but I want to shuffle here for you guys, and let's just get some of, let's just uh, pull on your energy here. So Virgo, spirit, this might be a clear channel for Virgos here. What's going on? For Virgo, first half of the month of March. So this is March 1st through to the 15th. Virgo, my lovely Virgos. Okay, one more shuffle for Virgo. First half of March, 1st through the 15th, 2018. Let's see what we've got here for you, lovely Virgo. Your overall energy, we're starting off with the Six of Pentacles. Balance, give and take. Some of you are learning a lesson in balancing give and take here. Um, Virgos are very giving. They can be very, very giving. So some of you maybe have maybe have been overgiving is kind of what I'm picking up on. Maybe some of you have been undergiving. Mm, this is a general read, guys. So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. I am reading for a lot of people. Aha. So next we have the Ten of Wands. So some of you have been overgiving, and you're kind of like, I'm done with that. That is way too burdensome for me. And we have the Four of Pentacles, followed by, underneath all of that, we have the Ten of Cups. Now, Taurus did get the Ten of Cups in their reading. And Taurus is my sun sign, so ooh. <laughs> but okay, so. I'm seeing two different things here, okay? I'm, I'm seeing two different categories of uh, Virgo. One, I'm seeing the ones that have been uh, overgiving and have become overburdened in some way, shape, or form with some relationship. And I'm also seeing those who have been undergiving and just like, almost like hoarding, hoarding stuff, hoarding your love, hoarding your affection, keeping things under close wraps for some reason, okay? There's a reason for it. I'm not saying that those of you that have been undergiving and just like taking and, and not really giving back, um, I'm not saying you're doing it for malicious reasons. Like I'm kind of picking up that some of you are doing it because you don't want to get hurt. Like there are people that are giving things to you and you're just like, okay, thanks. But you don't really want to give back in return because you're afraid of being hurt in some way. Some of you are just being greedy. I mean, there is that. This is a general reading. All right, so let's get into your first half of the story. For the first half of this month, we have the Eight of Swords and we have the World. Okay, so um, tra entrapment, Virgos. Some of you, uh, you're feeling trapped. Something has been, you've been, and, 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 and you've in, been in this mental state for a long time. But understand with the Eight of Swords, you know, you can always get yourself out of it. And with the World showing up with that, I'm seeing that, you know, you're this, Whatever this mental prison you feel like you've been in for so long, it's coming to an end. And it absolutely has to do with this balance between give and take. There, and this could, abs this could be, I feel like this is relationship oriented, whether it's friendships, family, um, work relationships, love relationships, you're moving out of this entrapment that's been keeping you from balancing give and take in your relationships. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. I mean, this is a major life cycle. This is a major, um, the world is a major arcana. So this is a major lesson for you. You know, this is a major cycle that's coming to an end. And I'm feeling like a lot of relief, especially with the 10 of wands here, like laying down all these burdens that are keeping you from being reciprocal. Because I feel like you want to, you want to give back. You want to be able to give back or you want to be able to give and receive back in equal manner. It's just, there have been beliefs um, mainly belief systems, because the Eight of Swords talks is, speaks of mental things. There, are, there have been belief systems that have been keeping you in this imbalanced cycle, and now that's coming to an end, and that's, I think that's excellent. Next, we have the Hierophant. Ooh, some of you may be dealing with a Taurus, and the Ace of Pentacles. So there could be a brand new start coming with a Taurus. Um, there could be a new relationship coming um with with visions of marriage i'm getting like there's 
maybe some of you are um, opening up to the possibility of a marriage with somebody. The Hierophant can talk about marriage. The Hierophant also talks about convention and whatnot. Um, and but the Hierophant is also a Taurus card. So I'm getting that for a lot of you, this could be a brand new start with a Tauren. Um, this could be a brand new spiritual start too. There could be a new um, a new level of spirituality that's opening up to you as you release this negative cycle of um, imbalance and give and take. Um, you are being influenced maybe to reassess your spirituality or there is a sort of, there is some new spirituality that's coming into your life that is helping facilitate the ending of this cycle. That's what I'm getting also. Yeah, moving on with your story. We have the King of Wands. So we've got a fire sign showing up and a page of wands. Ooh. Ooh, some of you, some of you are really passionate about something and want to give an offer. Um, want to send a message to someone. And I believe this really has to do a lot with those of you that have been kind of holding back on your emotions or your passions or, or giving to some sort of situation. Like in many cases, you're ready to give now. Or you're moving into a situation where you will be ready to give because you're releasing, you're ending the negative thought patterns and belief systems and cycles that have kept you from giving to this person, to this organization, this situation, whatever that is for you. It doesn't even have to be one person. You could just be opening yourself up enough to be vulnerable in some way, which is great, I think. Vulnerability is actually a, a, a strength. It's not a weakness. Being able to be vulnerable is very much a strength. Moving on with your story, we have temperance, balance. Uh, ooh, and the fool. Woo! Woohoo! Now, generally speaking, you're finding balance within yourself. And that balance is helping you facilitate greater balance within your relationships. And it's absolutely um, appearing as a fool type of energy because you're kind of embarking on a brand new cycle in your life. I mean, and it's no, it is no coincidence, guys, that the fool is showing up right under the world. Literally, you go from the, the world is the end of the major arcana, and then you circle back right up to the fool. So that absolutely is not a coincidence. I'm also getting some twin flame vibes here. I'm getting them with the king of wands being the divine masculine or the divine masculine energy. And I'm also getting it with temperance here, which is union between the twins, but it's also union within the self. And if I'm speaking to some divine masculines here, um, you know, greater balance is being brought into your life. So you're, you're, you're becoming more and more whole which is going to lead you to want to lead to reach out to your twin, I believe. You, in many cases, some of you are going to want to start giving back in this relationship. Like if you've been in the situation where your divine feminine has just been giving and giving and giving and you haven't been really been reciprocating for whatever reason depicted as, as the Eight of Swords here, that could be coming to an end. Um, divine feminines. I mean, it's 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 just a mirror of that. Divine feminines, you're you're ending the cycle that has kept you in this burdensome state. And this is more than just with your divine masculine. This is with your relationships as a whole, all all over the all over the whole spectrum of relationships within your life. Greater balance within yourself is causing you to step out in this new way depicted by the fool, and you are no longer giving to situations like that. That's great. Moving forward, ooh, the tower. The tower coupled with the Wheel of Fortune. Very interesting. So we've got a lot of major arcana here, Virgo. A lot of major arcana. 
but the, the, there, it, there is somewhat of a tower moment that either you're going to go through or you're already, maybe you're already going through it. Um, but the Wheel of Fortune here is telling me, don't be afraid of this tower moment because it's actually going to be, work in your fa really well in your favor. <clears throat> a sudden change, a sudden illumination, a sudden shakeup in your life is, yeah, it's going to shake you up. But it is in service of um, getting the wheels of destiny in greater motion or in motion in general. Um, I'm hearing go with the flow, go with it. Whatever gets shaken up in your life, just go with it. All right, try to see the most positive aspects out of it, but go with it. There we go. Also, what I'm getting is you actually may be the tower moment. I don't, you may not be um, experiencing the tower moment. You're putting forth a tower situation for a lot of people in your life. And the universe is saying, like, you're going to have, there's just like, there may be some sudden revelation that you're just all of a sudden you're coming out with. And people are like, totally like, well, this totally came from left field. And you're in your head kind of like, no, actually, I've been dealing with this for a while. I just never told you. But um, the uh, I'm also getting with the Wheel of Fortune here, it's going to be a good move because it's going to set some things in motion that's really going to bring destiny to the forefront of your life. It's really going to bring you that which you know you deserve. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely see Virgo. I definitely, definitely see you being the tower moment for someone instead of you experiencing the tower moment, if that makes sense. Moving forward, finally in your, ooh, ciao. <laughs> uh, the Ace of Swords oh, and the Ten of Pentacles. All right, so um, some of you, some of you, if any of you have your uh, moon or rising sign or even your sun sign in Taurus, like me, my, my sun sign is Taurus. Um, I would advise you to check the Taurus video because Taurus also got the Ace of Swords, but the Ace of Swords was in their overall energy. But for you, Virgo, the Ace of Swords is leading to Ten of Pentacles for you. Um, you know, and ah, the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, guys. That's what the, That was the other card. Taurus also got the Ten of Cups. And actually, Taurus got the Ten of Cups where you got the Ten of Pentacles. Very interesting. But again, I don't see the Ace of Swords as being something that is, that is illuminated for you. It's not necessarily some new information that you're getting. It's you presenting this new information towards people, which again is going to lead to the acquisition of a Ten of Pentacles situation for you. It won't be immediate. I'm not saying you're going to do this and boom, you've got Ten of Pentacles right there. No, but I am saying that it's going to lead you. It's going to facilitate you. It's going to uh, uh, propel you towards the Ten of Pentacles that you've been seeking. And coupled with the Ten of Cups, this isn't necessarily just a um, a money thing, a financial thing. When it comes to the Earth signs, the Pentacle suit for me is more than just finances or um, material possessions or all that. Because you know, as Earth signs, we we are we tend to translate um, things into tangible sensations, right? What we can feel, what we can touch, what we can sense, um, and we can even see love as a tangible thing. I know I do in many cases. So for me, um, this is saying completion in your physical life of whatever that looks like for you. And especially because the Ten of Cups is here, I definitely feel like for some of you, that means um, completion in love, especially with talking about the, the balance between give and take. For you, the Ten of Pentacles in love could look like that ultimate balance between give and take in your relationships, whether that be romantic, friendship, family, whatever, business, whatever. All right. And Ten of Cups doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic thing. It could just be ultimate fulfillment emotionally in whatever they, way that, pick, that that looks for you. So, again, that could be relationships with family, lo um, love, uh, business. I definitely see business as being a part of this for some of you Virgos. Like you've been overburdened at work and you've been having to defend yourself with the Four of Pentacles. 
um, or someone's just been hoarding something or keeping something from you with the ten of, with the four of pentacles, excuse me, in this business relationship. And you're getting to a point where it's like enough is enough. But this you you presenting the tower moment to people and you presenting yourself as the ace of swords, because I do feel like you have the upper hand here. It's, again, facilitating this ten of cups, ten of pentacles, whatever that may look like for you. And it may not be immediate. Some of you may actually get the recognition you've been looking for if this is a business situation. Um, and then that will lead you towards, you know getting what you want. But even if you end up, say, losing a job over this, don't despair. Don't despair because the wheel of fortune is still turning in your favor. So whatever relieves your life in this moment is only going to be replaced by something much, much better. All right, Virgo. So there it is. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And I will see you mid-March for your second half of the March reading. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.